Well, it's a lovely sunny day in the UK today, and the last thing I want to be doing is being stuck in a studio. But we've still got some important work to do and talking about the Creality K1C. So let's get straight into that. You are watching a master of work. Well, it's finally here, the almost all new Creality K1C, and despite all efforts from Creality to send me the red version, which by definition is simply better, faster, and more efficient, just down to the colour, at least that's my theory anyway, I didn't get that. The stock worldwide for the grey version just dropped only a few months ago and is now being unboxed. The very next day I was ushered into a Creality livestream to talk about the printer, but at that time, other than the onboard files, I really hadn't had time to simply give Creality's new flagship printer a decent rundown. So what's new? Well, like we've previously seen on the K1, the K1C offers much more of the same, but with a couple of unique changes. Firstly, we have a camera installed as standard, a redesigned nozzle which is now suitable for printing carbon fibre filaments. The bed has now got a metal front plate installed, telling us that it's the K1C along with the build volume, on the back, the carbon filter has now been added. Seemingly, the embossed logo on the front has now been replaced with a non-embossed alternative. Oh, and they also added a little flap on the back of the door. Seemingly also on the kinematics, they have also replaced the pulleys on the X and Y axis. Here's a shot here of the original K1, and well, here's a shot of the K1C. There you go. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. The rest is, well, as we previously saw on the K1 design, so we can assume that these changes are really just minimal, but add more function to the system that seems to be working reasonably well for the most part. As you might remember, my first outing with the K1 was nothing short of a disaster, but the next unit that was sent to me was certainly polar opposite, as seen in my K1 review. So it was in that video that really changed the dynamic of what I thought I knew about Creality, and I felt much more informed the following year's factory tour, where I saw firsthand how Creality operates and manufactures 3D printers in China. They also gave me the opportunity to dive into the process, and as it happens, I had already been invited back to China this past April, where I also got to see the new K2 Plus and a bunch of other new products coming from Creality. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at PCBWay. So if you are looking for top quality PCB manufacturing, look no further than PCBWay.com. With state-of-the-art facilities and a commitment to excellence, PCBWay delivers premium printed circuit boards tailored to your needs. From prototype to production runs, they guarantee precision, reliability, and a fast turnaround time. Trust PCBWay for all your PCB needs and visit PCBWay.com today to experience the difference. The K1C boasts a robust operating system, in this case, Clipper, providing users with root access for extensive customization options and to enhance the printer's performance with a maximum speed of 600 millimeters per second and an acceleration of 20,000 millimeters squared. The K1C offers swift operation although the speed may be contingent on filament characteristics. Simply testing with stock PLA from Polymaker demonstrates significant impact on high flow and rapid cooling on print quality, ensuring optimal performance even at high speeds. In an era where 3D printers are increasingly swift, maintaining speed while upholding print quality is paramount. On the Unicorn nozzle, which is apparently a quick swap solution, didn't impress me as much as their marketing did. I was really hoping to see something special here. Instead, we have a hot end with a hardened steel nozzle tip, again, being able to reach 300 degrees with an advertised over 1,000 plus clog free hours of printing with these test results. I think that the takeaway here between the K1 and the K1C is really the requirement of what you want to print and do you want to print in carbon fiber? The rest, in retrospect, is kind of the same, but in a good way. The enclosure elements are good, my drag train does still kind of rub on the lid, but all of the aspects of the build look pretty good. Additionally, and as I spoke about before, the Red by Munich version does certainly catch the eye, even if you're not a big fan of football. You can, well, always peel that off. It's a sticker. You can have yourself a lovely red K1C, which may or may not be faster. So let's think pink. So while I became bored of waiting for the red K1C version to arrive, well, I decided to modify the stock version into this aggressive pink color. And while it didn't add any additional speed, it certainly is a head turner in the 3D printing room. This is a pretty simple process. And again, it's painted, not vinyl wrapped. So I masked off the areas that didn't easily unbolt, simply broke the printer down, taking off the pressure door and side panels and masking off the rest. 
I figured that it would be wise to also paint the extruder cover, and well, this was the result. During the K1C printer tests, I really became obsessed with print quality of this Easter egg cat. The quality just wasn't brilliant, and it seemed to be whatever I did on the slicer or changed it in a profile, it just didn't improve the quality. I must have printed 50 of these things before my trip to China, and even took the filament with me to try on the printers they had out there. Here I am in my new office. I've got my Polymaker filament here, because we're going to be doing some tests on the K1C, see if we can replicate the issues that I've been having on my one at home, and hopefully try and solve them. So here we have a Creality K1C with the Polymaker filament that I've been using on my K1C. And we're gonna try and see if we've got the same kind of issues with that weird kind of bed movement on this machine like we do at the one at home. So, well, let's get into that. So I've loaded up my pink Polymaker filament. So I already have this in my slicer, so we're just gonna export this straight to the K1C. And well, let's see what the result is. And guess what? it had the same results. Seemingly, I tried everything. Bed tensioning, turning off the Z-hop, different slicers, different filament, and it seemed that there always seemed to be some slight movement in the bed, which was caused by the Z-movement, but in such a small layer lines, it was something that I just couldn't let go of. So when I was at Creality in China, I had a chat with a few of the engineers who said perhaps moving the rods and recalibrating would improve it, but it just didn't improve. By the time that I returned to the UK, the red unit had also arrived, So the test went on, and with the same results. I'd love to know why these prints aren't quite as perfect as I wish they could be. But what I'll do is I'm going to have to let it go at this point because I can't do really any more with this. But if you've got any thoughts, if you've got any comments, leave them down below in the comment section. Um, I'll leave this link as well to where you can download the STL. And if you get any better results than I've managed to have with this, again, I've got a little bit of ringing. Um, there seems to be movement on the bed. It's, it's something I'm just going to have to let go now because I must have printed 50 or 60 of these things so far and, you know, we need to move on. So let me know in the comments. Like I say, I've had to let this issue go, but it's really been the only problem that I've had so far with the K1Cs. Both ultimately have performed pretty well at the box and I didn't add them to the cloud and I just opted for USB printing on all of the models that I've printed so far. I've even reprinted the SE droid that I built at the Creality offices. And that's a video we've got coming up on the channel really soon. The Etsy file from our friends over at Droid Division. So for the K2 Plus coming out later on this year, is it even worth buying a K1 or a K1C or a K1 Max? Well, it's debatable, I guess. And we know certainly that the multi-material system, the CFS unit that Creality are producing for the K2 Plus will also be coming available for the End of 3 V3 and also the K1 line. So I guess it's going to be a kind of watch this space. It has driven down the pricing, certainly on the K1 and the K1C, and also really the K1 Max, I guess. But I don't think you're going to see a K1C Max. That's not really a thing that I've seen from them. Uh, and I think ultimately you're just going to see the K1 Max. And to be completely frank with you, if I was to buy a Creality printer right now, it probably would either be the V3 or it would be the K1 Max due to the size. So it's really going to be down to what you want to do. Uh, the K1C is a certainly a very, very capable printer. It works very well, other than our little problem with the, um, with the, with the cats. But other than that, you know, the mechanical printing that I've been doing, the results have been very, very good. One other rumor that I've heard from quite a few new users is, is actually the K1 Max is now also shipping with the K1C hot end and nozzle. So ultimately, you're probably getting the same kind of experience now on the K1 Max that you would also be getting on the K1C. So it's very much up to you on which one you want to purchase. Links, of course, as always, will be in the description below. So let's sum this whole thing up. The K1C really lends itself just to being an upgrade to the K1. Rather than calling it a V2, the C part obviously stands for carbon. So printing in carbon fiber materials without degradation on the nozzle is really the point. 
I feel that you will still be rolling the dice ensuring that you're going to have a good Creality printer and buying any printer from a reliable supportive source will be paramount in any case. Sites like Creality Official, for example, are simply not official. In fact, they're run by the people at Comgrow and offer you little to no support and certainly no comeback if you have a problem with your printer. Store.creality.com is certainly the reputable place that you probably want to be purchasing this from or of course from Amazon.com. All links, of course, as always, will be in the description below. So just before we finish here, I just wanted to show you a couple of prints that I'm working on at the minute. This is a gearing system for a um, for a foot drive for a robot that we're working on right now. And uh, I decided to use the K1C to kind of make some of these parts. So just want to show you a couple of these parts here. This is a uh, this is a gearing mech um, that's going to be putting quite a quite an amount of torque through. This is their uh, speedy PLA uh, from Creality that um, again. It's come out beautifully, absolutely beautifully. And then, of course, on top of that, we then have these elements here. These are going to be uh, surrounds for tires. So there'll be a TPU um, basically mapping across the top here, and these will sandwich together. So the idea is these bits go here, and then the wheel or the uh, TPU tire basically sits on top, and they get bolted together. So these are some absolutely beautiful parts that are coming out of both K1Cs at the moment. So if you're thinking about buying one, um, like I say, store.creality.com or amazon.com. Thanks, guys, for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We've got tons, tons, and I really mean so many tons of footage um, and products and stuff to get out. So um, join me next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.